Hi, this is Mike with the Strawberry Store. It's December 1st, 2011 today. Uh, a little bit chilly, but uh, uh, s still doing some work outside. I just wanted to uh, start a, a series on a uh, cold frame that we're building. Uh, actually have built, uh, but we're putting uh, some special features into it that I wanted to make note of. Uh, this is a 12 by 16 uh, cold frame. No heat. Uh, at this point, uh, no water other than a hose, and uh, no other uh, utilities coming in here. Uh, this is what the uh, the county requires. Uh, this is the largest size that we can put on this property. Uh, so let me give you a quick tour of the cold frame, let you know kind of what we're uh, in the process of doing and uh, where we're heading, and uh, we'll pick up with another uh, video in the in the near future about how we're progressing uh, We have six mil Plastic on here. It's a four-year plastic uh, Single layer and uh, you can see on the side there We've got a uh, one by four and that's the area below that one by four is meant to be cut open in the spring for ventilation the only outside ventilation that we have is is a door here with a screen. This was probably the most expensive part of the whole greenhouse other than the pipes. Uh, the pipes were uh, 10 pipes at uh, about 10 bucks a piece, around $100. Uh, this door was 97 but I wanted a good door uh, with uh, uh, some ventilation. Um, the whole greenhouse using pieces and parts from here and there is probably around $400. Uh, something like that. The other feature I wanted to note, let's go inside, is a uh, roof vent. Uh, we found the, uh, the roof vent uh, to be very effective, uh, giving us a little bit of breathing room when it starts heating up in the morning on some other cold frames that we have. Uh, so we wanted to incorporate that into, into this design. The uh, Greenhouse is, or the coal frame is a little bit uh, messy right now. We had a, a small raised bed in this area of uh, garlic, which we're going to have to move. I'm hoping to uh, still use some of the garlic out of there. Uh, so I'm waiting until, uh, until we've used that up before I actually clean it up. The other thing just inside the door you'll see is some, are some uh, containers, uh, aeration containers that we use. Uh, for various growing and testing. This is our winter carrots uh, in these four containers. Uh, we're actually, since we're, uh, since we built this um, about in the last month or so, we're planning on putting some more carrots in uh, toward the winter time. You can see some of these uh, uh, panels around here. Uh, these panels were uh, left actually rotting away outside. They were tables that we had used in the past for propagation and uh, we decided to to repurpose them uh, and I'll get to that in a second. You can see there were two tables that we cut up and uh, what we're planning on doing is uh, creating some benches in this space. These uh, cinder blocks are going to be the uh, the support for the benches. The wire that you saw here is is called goat wire that we buy at uh, Tractor Supply in 4 by 16 sh uh, foot uh, panels and uh, we cut them in half usually to be able to handle them. So we're going to put uh, two of those panels in here so we'll have four by, two 4 by 8 tables. The back of the cold frame will be primarily uh, open space uh, with no benching. Uh, we're going to do some vertical containers and uh, you can see we have a couple of uh, Emily's Gardens back here with some strawberries in. Um, we're doing a little bit of hydroponic testing with the Emily's Garden and have had some success but we're hoping to uh, have more success since we got these out of the house and uh, have some natural light now. You can see also that we have some strawberry plants growing here. Uh, there's a couple back there by the small barrel and uh, there's uh, six of them right up here in front. These are some uh, uh, pineapple crush, alpine pineapple crush that uh, we're using for seed production. 
Uh, you can see also that they're in uh, uh, pond baskets. They're called pond baskets. They're an aeration type container. Uh, probably, I would say very few are actually using them to grow plants. Most other than, I mean, aquatic plants. Uh, I couldn't find any literature at all where anybody was using them to grow uh, any kind of terrestrial type plants. So getting back, uh, let's finish up on these panels. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the area underneath uh, where these blocks are sitting and put uh, uh, some wire mesh to keep uh, snakes out and so forth. And we're going to make uh, about four bin, bins on each side. Uh, and we'll get, in, get into that uh, in the next video when, we're, uh, when we have a little more progress done uh, with, the, uh, with the construction of these bins. It's going to be a combination composting, vermicomposting system. The uh, composting system uh, will be used to, to heat the coal frame in the winter. Uh, we've got some materials outside already that we've been gathering up and we're going to uh, cut the grass today and catch it and use the grass for, uh, uh, you know, for uh, the greens that, uh, uh, that we need in the uh, composting bin to heat it up. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the next video. But I just wanted to give you an introduction to what we're doing here. We're doing a lot of repurposing, recycling, composting, vermicomposting, and uh, we're going to be growing our own veggies in here uh, for our own purposes uh, here in our home, uh, as well as using this uh, cold frame for uh, seeding, winter seeding uh, of crops, uh, the strawberry crops. So. Uh, with that, I'll uh, cut it short here, and we'll uh, wait until the next video to, uh, to get into some more detail. With that, this is Mike with the Strawberry Store signing off.